What's going on YouTube Chaser and Aftershock videos and welcome to the next episode where we try to take a deck ar deck or archetype that we haven't played before and try it's like really main theme version and then where we try to make it better. And today's deck suggestion profile is the Gravekeepers. Now the Gravekeepers as you know are very old school um, cards or very older archetypes so of course, we want to keep it as original and old-ish as possible before we get into like a newer version or a uh, updated version of it. So let's just go ahead by go by the card by card for the first one. We have one Gravekeeper's Oracle. This one basically you could tribute it, tribute three monsters or one Gravekeeper's monsters to tribute summon it, and then it could you can either gain these effects. Uh, this card gains attack equal to to the combined levels of all of the monsters tributed times 100. Uh, destroy all set monsters your opponent controls or all monsters your opponent controls lose 2,000 attack and defense. So this one's pretty good if you have uh, multiples on the field. Then kind of the same thing with Gravekeeper's Visionary. Uh, you could tribute summon this card by tributing one Gravekeeper's monster, except this card gains 200 attack for each Gravekeeper monster in your graveyard. So he can get pretty big pretty fast. Then we have one Gravekeeper's Heretic. It's just basically unaffected by all other, all other card effects while uh, Necro Valley is on the field. Uh, we have three Gravekeeper's com uh, Commandant. It, this one can be discarded to add a Necro Valley to your hand. We have three grave Gravekeeper Spiritualists. This one lets you uh, fusion summon one Spellcaster fusion monster from the extra deck by using this card. You control and other monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. So that one is really good. And then we also have, of course, the three Gravekeeper Spies. Which, when you just flip, flip summoned, you can special summon a Grave. Keeper's monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck, so that's a pretty good searcher. And then we have great one grave or three grave keepers guard, which lets you um, compulse uh, an opponent's monster back to the hand. We have two grave keepers recruiters. This one, if it's sent to the graveyard under any circumstance, adds one grave keeper monsters from uh, with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. So instead of the grave keepers by special summoning, this one adds to your hand. We have one Gravekeeper's Nobleman. It says when this card you control is destroyed by a battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the graveyard, uh, you can special summon one Gravekeeper's monster from your deck and face down defense position. So if you sent and pass this one, it gets destroyed. Uh, you can special summon uh, a Gravekeeper in defense face down. So you can go to your spy. Then you can go into when that gets flip summoned, then it could just snowball from there. Uh, then we have two Gravekeeper's Headmen. This one says uh, you can target one, this card is summoned, so special or normal, special or normal you can target one level four uh, Gravekeeper's monster in your graveyard and special summon it in attack or face down defense position. So this could help you reset your Gravekeeper's spy, or you could special summon your Gravekeeper's spir uh, spiritualist that you've already used once to get it back on the field to reuse it again. So next we have three Necro Valley Thrones. You can activate one of these effects, add one Gravekeeper's monster from your deck to your hand, so it's the Searcher spell card. Or immediately after this effect resolves, you can normal summon one Gravekeeper's monster, so it it could also give you an additional summon. Next, we have three Swords Revealing Lights, just to kind of stall out. Uh, we have one Terraforming, of course, to get to our our, our three Necro Valleys. We have one Foolish Burial, uh, just in case we need to dump something in order to get the Gravekeeper's Headman in the graveyard, or you know, for it's a special summon. Uh, we got one Monster Reborn, of course, one MST to either deal with back. Our, our back row or to deal with our own necro valley if we have to we have two great keeper servant uh this one says unless your opponent sends one card from the top of his or her deck to the graveyard they cannot declare attack and the reason why this is in here because we are running also one dimensional fissure and one macros cosmos so in addition to just uh great uh, supernaturalist beat down we also have uh our other win condition which is uh your opponent not being able to attack or send to the graveyard so they can basically do almost nothing. Uh, there is there is outs to this, but it is a very annoying thing to have to deal with. And then, of course, like I said before, we have the three Necro Valleys, uh, one Metaverse to also help search the Necro Valley and a Solemn Judgment to round off our main deck. Now, in the extra deck, as you can see, we only have three. We're trying to keep it the whole Gravekeeper's theme. So we have this, and this one says gains attack or defense equal to the combined original levels of the materials used for this fusion summon times 100. So if you use the... Uh, Gravekeeper's Gravekeeper Spiritualist, and then let's say you use Gravekeeper's Oracle in your hand too, or the Visionary, he can get a pretty good attack boost. And it says, while Necro Valley is on the field, this card or any card in your field zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. So it has to, your opponent has to go through this in order to get Necro Valley off the field. 
Uh, it says during your main phase, you can activate this effect during your end phase. So you have to activate it your main phase to get the effect during your end phase. Add a Gravekeeper's Monster or one Necro Valley card from your deck to your hand. So this card is actually pretty good. And then the, in, this, in the side deck, we just have some, like, you know, just some older good good stuff cards. You know, got the Solemn Warning, two more Solemn Judgments, Solemn Strike, uh, three Bottomless Trap Holes, another Gravekeeper's Servant in case we need to get to it faster, one Scapegoat, and one DD Crow. So let's just go ahead and run this in Nidio Pros and let's see how it does by itself. All right, guys, so here we are in our first match with the Grave, Ro Grave, Grave Keepers. But let's see how exactly this deck is supposed to be played. Okay, so we have Terraforming, Necro Valley, uh, the Commandant, which searches Necro Valley, so we don't need him right this second. We got every way to get Necro Valley. We already have it, so not a whole lot we can do. I guess we'll just set, set, and we have two other ways to get Necro Valley, so if they get rid of this one, we got two more. And we'll end our turn. Ooh, Zombie. Zombie and uh, Mayakashi. They definitely want to be able to do graveyard stuff, so this might be a problem for them. Oh, yeah, that totally shut down the whole thing right there. Because Daki needs to be hopping in and out of the graveyard consistently to synchro climb, so the fact that ne Necro Valley completely shuts that off, this deck ain't going to have much going for it. See, surrendered, turn two. All right, so I guess, you know, this was a pretty lucky matchup, I would say, for me. But, you know, a win is still a win. So, now that we, you know, kind of got with that easy win there, uh, let's go ahead and try our vamped, a revamp, the revamp version of this, and let's see how well it does. All right, guys, so here we are with my revamped version to see if it's any better. Uh, some things that are different. I put some. I put a couple Ash Blossoms in here. In here, uh, Effect Veiler, um, Triple Tactics, Magical Ice Fusion, because they're all, since they're almost all spell, spell casters except for Ash. Uh, we can go into Quintet uh, Magician, so that's kind of a big bomb to throw down there. Uh, I also added in the Solemn Judgment, I believe. Um, some obviously the side deck's completely different. We got Pride of Planet Account to help us go in our fusions. Got the Nightmare Phoenix Unicorn Access Code Talker Raiders Knight since they're uh, a few level fours, and then we can go in the Ark Rebellion, obviously. And then we also have uh, uh, number 41, the Terribly Tired Taper. Uh, Zeus to overlay for any of them. Black Rose, their Synchro levels. Uh, since most of these are level four and Ash is three, we can go into some Synchro sevens like Cypress Quantum Dragon, which kind of compulses at the start of the damage step. Then you can attack again. Uh, Rhino Saber, the Mad Dash Armory. This one lets you... I dump as many cards in your graveyard. This card ga gains uh, 700 attack for each one. So I can help put some stuff in the graveyard you want as far as like different uh, names. If you want to go more heavily into the Quintet Magician strategy, then, of course we have the three Grave Keepers. And then side deck, just some good stuff cards like two Raigekis, two more uh, Triple Tactics called by the Grave. Secret Village of the Spellcasters wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, two Imperms, two Ice Dragons, you know, just... Just some overall just good stuff. But, I mean, most of the stuff synchronizes pretty well. You know, the uh, Nightmares can pitch for their effect. So, again, that'll help go into the, you know, the Magicalized Fusion, possibly. And then, you know, we've got the same strats. The uh, Magic, Magic, or Gravekeeper Supernaturalist beat down, along with the um, uh, Gravekeeper Servant and the Dimensional Fission, the way they can't do anything. So, you know, it's just a little bit more up-to-date with different uh, cards that we can use. So, let's go ahead and throw this one into EDO Pro, so let's see if it does any better. So, here we are in our second match with the revamped version of, the, of my Grave Keepers. So, let's see what we have here. We have a Searcher. That's good. Let's activate that. A normal Summon. Add. Let's grab ourselves a... Grab a Commandant. Activate Commandant. Got the Necro Valley. Let's normal summon the Gravekeeper's Headman. Activate it. Grab Commandant. Okay. Let's 
So that Necro Valley. And activate swords. Well, at least we got swords to follow up with the interrupted play. Five, six, and we will ash the crap out of that. Okay, turn one on swords. We have the other gravekeeper's headman. Let's normal summon him. We'll activate his effect. Get the count out back this time. Another imperm. Okay, let's. Turn him to defense. And it'll end our turn. Two imperms in a row. End phase. Let's activate the MST. Target that. Let's get rid of whatever that is. A third imperm. Yeah, he's, he's going to hurt my swords. Uh, let's set this one. Put him in defense. We still need like another card or two to get anything going. We'll end the turn there. This will be the last turn on swords. End phase. There he goes. All right. Heretic. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We only have four, four grave keepers here. Could go in, ooh, no, we can't go in the Raiders Knight. I guess we'll flip this. Normal summon the Heretic. He's 18, we could crash and hit him for 3,500. Or what else could we do? Go Unicorn and an Access Code Talker. Yeah, that'll get the stuff in the grave faster. Go one, two, three. Oh, it's gotta be different names. Okay, so one, two, three. Remember Unicorn. We can go to access code. Target unicorn. Activate. Oh! Why didn't let me target unicorn? To banish one link monster from your grave field or graveyard and then destroy it. So I was going to try to hit it for 5300, but obviously that's not how it works, apparently. Oh, okay. Add one gravekeeper monster. Oh, let's grab the spy. We'll set it. End phase. Well, at least now we can go into, if he attacks it and it survives, we can get into the uh, spiritualist. Okay, we'll flip summon the gravekeeper spy. Grab the spiritualist. Uh, we'll kind of activate spiritualist. Target. What is that? Okay. And then I guess we're going into Raiders Night. Activate Raiders Night. Pitch the specialist or spiritualist. Our rebellion dragon. We'll battle. This could have been game if I didn't do that stupid access code talker misplay. Uh, swords kind of helps. All right, let's get Necro Valley back up. And let's normal summon Gravekeeper's Oracle. Yes, activate it. Um, all face up opponents lose 2,000 attack. Perfect. Uh, he kind of sounds like a problem. Okay, and the attack and defense loss is, is permanent. So let's attack this. I 
in phase two, end phase, we got, this will be turn two on swords. We're hanging in there, even after that, I can't, still can't get over that misplay. I thought he meant, when he, when he meant to click it, I thought that meant like, yeah, use his effect, <laughs> but I'm stupid. Turn two on swords, come on, give me a Hail Mary. Dimensional fissure, interesting. Let's activate that. Switch him to defense. End phase. Okay, that was the last turn on swords. And we got another swords. That's so funny. Oh, we're going to throw that back up because we have no outs right now to win. We're just going to pass the turn on that. Alright, turn one on swords. There we go. Now he can do something. We'll normal summon the spiritualist. Activate spiritualist. Okay, let's, uh, alright, let's just wait one more turn and see if we can do anything about it. Okay, now we'll activate the Spiritualist, we'll get the Gravekeeper Supernaturalist, use both of these, he's at a whopping 3900, we'll uh, we could have went for game, but just in case. Set Spy, activate Supernaturalist. Battle phase. We'll attack over the King of Abyss. Yeah, we literally could have won, but I didn't. Stupid, remember? Okay, add to hand. Let's add Commandant, just in case they decide to clear off the Necro Valley. Surrendered. Perfect. Even with my miss, my two misplays, still got the win. So not going to complain too much about that. So not a huge difference, really, in the win rate of the deck. I mean, it's just... Once you get the Dimensional Fissure, Necro Valley up, I mean, that pretty much stops everybody in their tracks because most of these decks nowadays are heavily reliant on the graveyard. So that might have a lot to do with it. Didn't get to showcase a whole lot of the... I, you know, I was, actually, I was really trying to go for the Quintet Magician, but... He takes a while to set up, you know, even with the Foolish Burial, it's, it still takes a minute, but this is fun. I never had played it before, and now that I have, I know what they're capable of, and this could be a frustrating deck. I can see why, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below what you guys think of the Gravekeepers or what you think of my revamped version of the Gravekeepers, and let me know down below if you think you have a different strategy or what you take in and what you take out. I'd love to hear it. Uh, anyways, don't forget to check out my Patreon if you guys want to support the channel. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. Give me a follow. If any of these cards interest you, feel free to check out my TCG player account. I will leave the link below in the description if you want to check that out. And then also, don't forget to check out any merch for Aftershock videos. It's got some cool stuff there. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.